This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the super easy all-in-one platform that will help you build your own website. Stand out and succeed online with Squarespace. Congratulations, Illumination! One billion dollars! I knew you had it in you! Oh, thank you. I mean, it's no big deal, really. I'm just doing my job. <laughs> exactly, and that's why you're my favorite animation studio. <clears throat> so, uh, anyways, what brings you here? Well, I... I kinda have this idea. Oh, well, go on. Alright, so, we've been doing a lot of sequels and spin-offs lately, you know, and I'd like to pitch this movie that you can hopefully greenlight. Oh, of course, anything for you, go right ahead. What do you have in mind? Oh, you wanna do another Dr. Seuss? How about another Minion movie? Oh, oh, how about a spin-off prequel about that Kevin Hart rabbit? Yeah, yeah, we can bring along Dwayne Johnson. I hear he's busy hijacking projects left and right anyways. Well, those do sound promising. I was kind of thinking of something else. Oh, okay. What do you have in mind? Okay, I was thinking, how about a movie about a family of ducks? Keep going. Oh, that's it. Oh, that's it. Oh, okay. Ah, huh. wow. Um, just a movie about ducks. A family. Of ducks. Mallards to be specific. Oh, you even thought of the subtype. Okay, well, um, hmm. Um, well, kind of a bit random, isn't it? Sir, I've made five to six movies about yellow talking beans who are obsessed with bananas and potatoes. This is far from random for me as I'm concerned. Fair point? Hmm. Ugh. Um, I don't know, Illumination. I mean, have you tried passing this idea down to DreamWorks instead? Okay, look, Illumination, I mean, I'm not so sure. I mean, with all the schematics and the inflation and the optics and the demographic. If you let me do this, I'll do Despicable Me 4. Deal. Migration, I shit you not, is a movie about a bunch of ducks migrating to Jamaica. I am dead ass when I say that that is literally the movie. I'm not gonna give you some bullshit synopsis that'll make the movie sound vague and interesting. The movie's about a family of ducks migrating to Jamaica. That's it. That's the movie. It's not based on a book. It's not a sequel. It's not a spin-off. It's not from an existing IP. It's simply an animated movie about ducks made by the studio that gave us the fucking minions. And it's good. I'm not saying it's decent or it's passable like I said in the previous Illumination reviews. It's legitimately a good, funny, light-hearted, family-friendly movie. I... I don't even know what to say anymore. Um. But surely, right? It was released by Illumination. It has nothing to do with the minions. The main character looks like a generic duck. The lead voice actor is Kumail Nanjani. Though hilarious, Illumination's target demographic clearly doesn't know this man. So surely, surely, this had to be a flop, right? Ah, ah, see, see, it made just as much as Disney's wish. So I guess we can say financially they- Oh my God, the budget was only 72 million. Okay, I uh, I guess I'll go fuck myself. Jesus, I guess when they said Illumination pulls numbers, they pull numbers. Yeah, so apparently Migration wasn't really that of a hit for Illumination. The twist, they still made profit. And not just barely. Yeah, to them, that's a flop. My guess is that the only reason they claimed this movie to be a financial disappointment was that everyone simply got used to Illumination earning over a bajillion dollars every release. But all jokes aside, I legit think Migration 
is a good movie. And this is not in the case of, oh, it's Illumination, so the bar is lower. And well, yeah, that's somehow true, but at the same time, there's a lot of factors in play. Honestly, this is an Illumination movie where I genuinely felt like it was a family movie, not just a movie directed to kids. And ironically enough, the last time I felt this in an Illumination movie was from their previous project, which kinda got me wondering if Illumination is actually starting to turn a tide on their product. Ah, never mind. So, what exactly stood out to me in this Illumination flop? Well, let's find out. Side note, I seriously doubt you can really call this thing a flop when it made a $160 million profit, but hey, that's just me. Let's take a look at Illumination's migration. But before that, here's a word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that helps you build your own ideal website. Either it's for your business, your brand, or for your own personal use, Squarespace has got you covered. A lot of you guys don't know this, but back in university, I actually majored in multimedia. I mean, come on, how did you not notice? And I've done my fair share of building a website in code from scratch, and trust me, you don't want to go down that road. That's where Squarespace comes in. With Squarespace, you can easily build your own professional website. Squarespace provides cool and top-of-the-line features that'll help you in every step of the way. You don't have to worry about starting from scratch, because with Squarespace, you can get started with your flexible, easy-to-use website templates. With designs for every category, you can customize your look, update the content, and add features that fits your needs. And it's made easier with Squarespace Squarespace's groundbreaking Fluid Engine, a built-in drag-and-drop editor that gives you total control of your website's design. But that's not all. Did you know in Squarespace, you can actually make your own logo? Yup, with a few simple clicks, you can make your very own logo for maybe a business card, a website, or even a t-shirt. And don't worry, Squarespace even provides a convenient preview option for your idea. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash beaniebryan to save 10 off your first purchase of a website or domain. Again, that's squarespace.com slash beaniebryan or click the link in the description down below. And thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. We begin the movie with... I'm out. Alright, I'm kidding, okay? This is honestly a pretty cute intro. In fact, the minions aren't even being annoying here. They're just chilling on a rock. And that's it. That's all you get to see from the minions. But I get the game plan. Gotta make sure those kids stay focused. If we show minions for the first 30 seconds of the movie, they'll be locked in for a solid minute. And by then, they'll see the cute ducks. And at that point, it'll be smooth sailing. We're first introduced to our main characters. We have Mac, Pam, Dax, and Gwen. The Mallard family. Hey, don't judge me. They're last names are literally Mallard. There's nothing much I can do. And very quickly, we're shown that Mac has pretty much kept his family safe by basically being a pussy. Clones and tornadoes and crocodiles and poisonous- Yeah, in your typical family movie fashion, we have, of course, the overprotective parent raising an outgoing, curious, and adventurous kid. Only difference now is the entire family's in on it too. Yep, so they establish early on that Mac, the dad, has spent his entire life living by the pond and has continued to do so with his family. Props to the movie, not even three minutes in, we immediately get a good look into our main character's motives and personalities. Mac being the overprotective father, Dax being the fed up son, Gwen being the youngest and the most innocent one, and Pam, the mother, basically being damage control. After a quick and a pretty fun montage, the Mallard family would get to meet a flock of migrating birds on their way to Jamaica. And here we find out that the Mallard family has never actually migrated before and don't have plans to do so either. Unfortunately, we're just slammed this winter, aren't we, Pam? Because we've got the thing and then the, 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 we got the thing off. They'd get invited to join though, but Mac rejects the offer in a condescending and rude way. Well, maybe next year then? You got it! Next year! Uh, well... Which does not sit well with Pam. Later that night, we get to meet another member of the family, Uncle Dan. He somehow indirectly convinces Mac to go on migration. So, motivated to change his perspective on life, he eventually agrees to migrate down south and leave the pond for the winter. And I like how this played out. Illumination could have gone the standard basic route where they just insert something rash to force them to leave the pond, like destroying their home or have a predator or drive them away or some other BS. But nope, they actually went and made it completely based off of a character's decision. It's just Mac showing that he's a good dad. So yeah, the Mallards gather around early in the morning and off we go to our adventure. Gee, 
Jesus Christ, it's when the fuck could you do this? Okay, so one of the things that really did impress me the most in this movie is the animation. Which shouldn't come as a surprise since they did make the Mario movie and that looks stunning. But that was Mario, okay? For Illumination to go this hard on a random movie about ducks? I mean, look at that shit. Looks like someone still had some leftover Nintendo money, I see. It's so weird how precise and detailed these scenes look too. The way they animate the ducks taking off looks so natural and meticulous, it's insane. From the wings flapping, causing the water to splash a little bit, that slight, shaky, and quick struggle when they take off, the little web feet dangling around, the lighting, and a detail I feel like nobody really appreciates was that the animators took the time to add some actual weight to their characters, making them look more natural and much more realistic. Like you can see it with how they move, they actually have mass. And this isn't some one-off scene by the way. The movie does a lot of flying sequences and they look so good. I don't think I remember Illumination ever giving us camera work like this, but bro, I shit you not, their flying animation is terrifyingly good. One can say might be at the same level as DreamWorks. Well. Anyways, gushing aside, at this point, it's still your standard family-friendly road trip movie. Our family spends most of the runtime going place to place, meeting new characters, making new friends, getting to different kinds of trouble, and all that. There's this one part of the trip where they meet these two herons, and for me, it's probably the best detour throughout the entire movie. It's basically the Mallard family completely walking on eggshells around these creepy, frightening, and unsettling couple. It's just about 10 minutes of pure force compliance it's hilarious <laughs> I'm in actual awe in an illumination movie it truly is the end of time. So Mac and the family end up playing around in the clouds and they get carried away, finding themselves in the heart of New York. Having no idea where to go, they get help from a pigeon named Chump, voiced by I'm okay. Yeah, no, I'm okay. My people arms and my people face. Look how close my butt is to my head. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Good God, another voice acting gig? Jesus Christ, how many animated characters have you played? Yep, Chump is voiced by none other than the one and only Aquafina, a reoccurring character in this goddamn channel, unfortunately. For context, Chump is pretty much the leader of the pigeons and is basically a no nonsense, hot headed, and downright crazy individual from New York. So, basically, your average New Yorker. And to Illumination's credit, she fits her role perfectly well here. Who would have thought casting a New Yorker to play as a New Yorker? We're playing with fire, baby! She does her character justice. She actually does an accent and she even provided a raspy voice to go along with it. And it works. And everything will be alright. She's dead, thank God. Fucking finally. Girl, I'm okay. Ah, never mind. She's okay. She's dead! Thank God! Fucking final! Aww. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Ha-ha! <laughs> you missed, boss! She's dead! Thank God! Fucking fuck! She takes them down to a restaurant where they get to meet the bird that can tell them where Jamaica is, Delroy. Turns out Delroy is from Jamaica as well, but was caught in cage by our main villain, the chef. Hey look, it's the thumb guy from Ratatouille. I always wonder what happened to him when he left Gusto's. Glad to see he's doing well. Dude got some duck tattoos, some piercings, rocking that goatee. Bro even has his own restaurant now, that's crazy. Dax would feel bad seeing Delroy all locked up. So he offers to help by convincing his dad to grab the key in the kitchen. After some thorough convincing, it didn't really take that long. All it took was for Dax to basically call his dad a pussy. Mac would try to grab the key by sneaking into the kitchen. Okay, first of all, how did nobody see him on his way to the kitchen? Bro ran right in the middle of the fucking dance floor in a room full of people and no one noticed? I would 100% notice a random ass mallard duck running across my peripheral vision, thank you very much. Pam also somehow was able to sneak into the kitchen before Mac. And with her help, they successfully managed to grab the key. They'd get caught by the chef before they'd get a chance to leave though and we're off to a chase scene. Now here's a weird part of the movie. Pam and Mac managed to escape out of the kitchen. But to their surprise, people, basically out of nowhere, rush to the dance floor. And for some reason, our heroes act as if they're in grave danger and that they can't seem to find a way out. <laughs> 
guys, I don't know if you know this, but um, you're fucking birds. Just use your fucking wings. But instead of doing that, the couple decide that the only way to escape this death trap was by doing the salsa. Okay. Fucking what? Where did this come from? Since when did you guys show any interest about dancing? Yeah, so Pam and Mac salsa their way out of the crowd. What's even weirder about this is that this isn't the last time they danced their way out of a situation, but we'll get to that. <laughs> Jesus Christ, just fucking fly! You have wings! You've been flying for a good chunk of the first half! What the fuck is stopping you from doing all that shit now? They do manage to take down the chef though and in the process, free Delroy. To show his gratitude for saving him, he offers to take them to Jamaica himself. Now here's another weird scene. The group say their goodbyes to Chomp and off they go down south again. But after a quick bathroom break, the crew discover a hidden door. A cellar. Now, note that that cellar is closed and it's not bothering anybody. It was closed. But for some weird reason, Mac just goes ahead and opens it anyway. Follow me and stay close. Why exactly do you need to check it out? There was literally nothing that was calling out to you to go down this fucking cellar. I know you were called brave by Delroy earlier, but Jesus Christ, this is so pointless. There was really no reason to be doing this. Well, anyways, they do explore down the cellar and they end up right in the middle of what I assume is a cult Maybe? But there was really nothing to worry about though. They were completely chill. I kinda assumed that they were batshit fucking crazy, but I'm glad that's not the case. Turns out this cult is waiting for their doors to open to paradise. Mac and the gang spend some time relaxing by the resort, but not all is well because later on we see that apparently all these ducks were purchased by none other than the chef. And I'm not gonna lie, 100% I dead ass thought our next destination was a slaughterhouse. But thankfully that wasn't the case because thanks to Dax and Mac, our heroes were able to save the other ducks and escape the chef once again. <laughs> this poor dude, he just wants to restock his inventory because he has a restaurant to run and no ducks to cook. Dude's gonna go broke and lose his home because a bunch of mallards can't mind their own business. Well. Anyways, later in the movie, the chef would actually manage to track them down and finally capture them. But he does fail to spot Dax and Gwen hiding. Trapped in the cage inside of the chef's helicopter, all hope seems lost as our flock is starting to think that it may be all over for them. Until, remember the time earlier when I said that Pam and Mac dancing out of the crowded dance floor wasn't the only time they danced out of a bad situation? Well, it all comes together as the two tango their way into opening their cages. Okay, fine. However, the chef would catch them in the act though and foil their plan. But with one swift bite from the nose by Pam, the flock would rally behind the two mallards and start to throw random shit towards our villain. <gasps> This. I 100% thought you were gonna say eat dick, but you know what? That's on me. That's my fault. I should've known better. The chef gets knocked out but lands on the button that opens the helicopter's bottom floor and out goes our main characters. Luckily, Dax literally swoops in with Gwen and saves their parents. The flock back in the helicopter manages to break down the lock and free themselves. They all regroup and finally, for one last time, escapes the chef. <laughs> And there he goes. He's probably gonna die soon due to lack of oxygen or to when the helicopter is eventually gonna run out of fuel. But hey, that's a hefty price to pay for simply trying to follow your dreams as a chef who sadly has duck on his menu. The flock finally get to Jamaica, everyone's happy, and of course, we get a closing dance sequence. Huzzah! <laughs> And that was pretty much migration. And yep, still good. It's not really a game changer or anything special. It's just simply a fun family movie. Yes, though I'm aware that the Mario movie also looked amazing, but even so, I was still impressed with the animation on this one. Especially with the flying scenes. Good lord, like really? Since when did you learn to do all that? Sure, the story may be generic and predictable, but that's pretty much just the movie playing it safe. And knowing Illumination, playing safe is nothing new to them. But 
other than that, it still has the qualities that make it a good, fun animated movie. There's really nothing more I can say other than if you're not doing anything important or want to kill some time or you want to sit back and watch a movie with your family, I'm suggesting that you should probably go ahead and give this one a try. It's fun. I had fun. Overall, Migration follows a story that's all too familiar and safe as far as family movies go, but with stunning visuals and animation, great voice work, a funny script, and likable characters, it's hard not to have a fun time. Though it doesn't introduce anything new to the genre, Migration is a pleasant surprise from the dudes behind the minions. So with that, I'm giving it a solid 7 out of 10. That's for today's video. I hope you enjoyed your stay. Have a great day and a great life, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!